From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantore. We began to hear the rumble of the fire. It seemed to shake the ground. There was no way we were going out that road, so I said, we're in trouble. You can feel the wind getting stronger. The flames are 100 feet tall, and it's moving quite quickly. Things are starting to swirl all around us. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck start to stand a little bit. I can remember the wind taking my hat and just sucking it right off my head. The fire tornado went from being four or five feet across to probably close to 150. There's no time to start the jet ski. Wells and Hemphill take off running. When they look behind, they can't believe what they're seeing. One of the jet skis is 60 feet up in the air, but it is over my head going around and around into the fire tornado. The two deputies struggle to get away before the fire tornado sucks them in. The smoke's so thick, you can't see to the tree line across the meadow. It sounded like you had freight trains on both sides of you. You could hear the propane bottles blowing up in the campground. Deputy Takagi has just started the patrol vehicle when a flaming tree branch crashes down on it. Then he sees his partners are in trouble. I look over my shoulder back to see Tom and Rat, and it was like the apocalypse. It was just like a, this most gigantic thunder strike. It was just a huge, loud boom. As I looked back, I could just see the snow separate and all of a sudden just drop. This thing's going 45 miles an hour. You don't outrun these types of avalanches. I realized this thing is coming right at me. It's moving so fast and it's gigantic. We're in flight with a 27-year-old man who was snowmobiling. He was under the debris of an avalanche. As soon as it stopped, I was just like, he's gone. There was a very, very, very dark cloud over the whole airport. I've never seen so much lightning. I can see lightning hit it. And then it just sort of kept going and never turned or stopped. And it started bumping. No one could ever imagine like how much it was bumpy. As soon as I turned the radio on, they'd indicated there was a crash of an Air France plane. And I said, Dander, well, that's got to be Lauren's flight. My heart just sank because we were hearing like there's no sign of survivors. If the plane blew up, we could have died like any moment. And I just sort of stood there for a minute wondering if I'm going to jump or just sort of hang and drop. And I sort of backed up. And that's actually when the tail section exploded. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantore. Outside the main terminal, rental car agent Guy Lede shuttles a car down a service road parallel to one of the runways. He's surprised to see the Air France plane trying to land during the violent storm. It was raining so hard that even the car I was driving had to have the wipers on super fast because even doing about 40 kilometers an hour, still couldn't see. Guy keeps one eye on the road and the other on the descending plane. So I can see lightning hit it. And then it just sort of kept going and then never turned or stopped, it just disappeared. The Airbus is cloaked in darkness and rain. It touches down midway on the landing strip. Inside the cabin, passengers are unaware that the Airbus is nearing the end of the runway. I really didn't think anything was wrong until um, like the plane landed on the ground. We started clapping. We thought everything was going normal, except it started bouncing around a bit. Lauren tries to convince Pauline and herself that all is well. You were just so excited to get home that you were just like, whatever. 
and then it started bumping really vigorously. Like no one could ever imagine like how much it was bumping. It felt like your seat was just gonna fly out of the ground. The plane skids off the end of the runway. It rips through a chain link fence, carves a groove in the service road, then plunges into a deep ravine. It comes to rest about 300 feet from Canada's busiest highway in the middle of the afternoon rush hour. <laughs> 